Hey guys. Um, first, a very quick uh, introduction. Yeah, uh, his, his name is Anish Uglan, and he's the game designer for Coolbyte. And I'm Martin Kvala. I'm the sound designer, and I'm also the visual designer for this little talk. So we apologize for formatting errors, for bad pictures, and generally low quality uh, in how things look in these slides. This is my bad, and it's, I apologize. I am so sorry for this. But yeah, we are from Coolbytes, and hello. Uh, basically, uh, we wanted to talk to you about something today, and we realized that these things might sound a bit naive, and you might consider us a little bit pretentious. <laughs> but basically, we think that creating our games should be all about art, and not the cash, not the dineros. It's basically, we are very lucky to be working in a medium nowadays that is so young and so, um, so much in development that basically every game that comes out, even if it's almost not played, it will affect the general course in some way for how games will go onwards because things are still moving, things are still being developed with technologies and tomorrow will not be the same as today, just as yesterday was not the same as how we are now. So our talk is called Designing with Heart and Head. And it's about the intention and the vision and how to maintain that and balance things. Uh, and this is kind of how we want to do things and how we like to do things. Mm. And uh, if you're disagreeing with us, that's totally cool. We can live with that. And we can definitely talk about this a, a la a later if uh, you have some thoughts. Yes, and uh, first up, we'll talk a little bit about what we mean when we say um, designing with heart and head and what the heart and the head actually is. So the heart is uh, good. <laughs> the, imagine, okay, so imagine the heart as, as this art llama who's kind of like, Mom, I, I just want to make art and good intentions and join, you know, the peace rally. And, you know, he, he wants to be up and making paintings. That's, that's the heart. It's, it's basically, it means well. It wants well. Yes, like the, the, the love for, for creating the beautiful experiences for others in the like, fantastic medium that the video games is. And then we have the head is bad parts. And imagine, uh, and when we say head, we don't mean, you know, thinking with an old noggin right here. This is all about uh, the head part is basically uh, the, the economy situation, marketing, thinking, uh, cynically and thinking uh, about all these aspects that is super boring and painful and uh, takes a lot of time and stress. Uh, and I, basically, we don't like this. Yes, like and, Im and imagine like basically that uh, it's a good example because this guy is like your uncle that always steals the silverware from the, like restaurants and he keeps on telling you to get a job and a haircut. And you know, if you have too long beard, he gives you a razor, and he says like it's too Martin Mulakwala or something because you have long beard. <laughs> uh, so that's that's the head part, the the very logical, cold calculating bit. Mm. Yes, and so a question is like, is your uncle wrong? And your uncle, like he, he might be an asshole, but he. Like there's merit to to what he's saying. Like the the heart really can't like live on its own. You really need the yeah. You really need the both of them. And like uh, I think everyone has a degree of like both of those uh, aspects in them. And if you don't, then you should really strive to to actually get it. Yeah. So we can actually iterate on what we said earlier, uh, because we all have these different degrees of these aspects within us. Uh, and it's nice when they work together. So if we kind of see them in a bit more uh, realistic lighting, you can say that uh, the heart is good, but it's not really smart necessarily. Uh, courtesy of Adrian for the tip for this comic was great. Uh, it's basically like it really reveals the depth that the heart is awesome. The, the, the llama is awesome and it's cool, but he will have difficulties all by himself. He has no sense of self-preservation uh, necessarily and struggles with this. And uh, basically then you have the head. Uh, it's, it can be bad thinking about very, very, very um, uh, monetization and uh, how to kind of get money off something. but. It can be really, really smart, and it can, and we can be basically what saves you and makes you 
be able to keep on working on your art. Mm. Yeah, we, we also think that like we are uh, super lucky to be able to do what we are doing right now. And, and if we waste the like, chance by, like, we just want to create art and bleed our hearts out and create beautiful experiences for other people, and we waste that opportunity by refusing to make money, then it's, uh, yeah, that, that's a really, really stupid idea. Let's see now. So, we wanted to kind of point out that our values is kind of who Coolbot is, because Coolbot is a, based on a loose collective of people, I guess, in a company that everyone has a say in what we do and what we want to make and what we, uh, what we run. And of course, we are, uh, we all have long beards, long hair, and, you know, uh, have like loose fitting pants that are very comfortable and sit in bean bags. We have a lot of bean bags in our office. And uh, we, we are more, much more in the heart section than the head. I mean, I think all the games we made so far has been all about we choose this game because this game is something that we really want to make. This is something that overall, this, we can see this like, ah, oh, we, we want to make this game because we haven't seen this before. We are burning to show this, and we really, really, really want to show this to other people. Uh, and uh, we don't know really how to do it necessarily in the beginning, but we'll get there. Mm. And yeah, just like um, Among the Sleep, for instance, was just an idea that everybody just wanted to go with because it was just the, like the, the, the heart, the signing with the heart, like in the, in the purest form, the like just imagine being a two-year-old child, first person game, horror title. And it was just something that clicked with everyone for with the intention of creating a like totally n new and unique experience for everyone else to enjoy with no intention of like, are we like, how are we actually going to sell this and are we going to make money? And in that sense, we've been like super lucky uh, because we uh, like it, it turned out well for us. And um, we got a lot of, of uh, help with that and people just like pushing it on us that we like, we really need to, to focus on how to yeah. make money off of this as well. I, I think basically you can say that Quill, like Among the Sleep happened because of a lot of really, really good uh, flukes. Like for instance, NFE is giving out uh, money and supporting uh, developers. That Kickstarter was around just that kind of a time when we started realizing that we could use that money. And we also were super lucky that we had a project that people liked and somehow heard of. Because none of these things uh, tells themselves, like none of these things necessarily happen. And I think if either of those things would have gone or not happened, I think Among the Sleep would have been a much lesser game if it, it would have been made at all. We had a lot of, a lot of luck. And we, like basically, if, it, if we had used a bit more of the head part in the beginning, it would have been a cool project, but the scope of it was just stupidly big. It was just far, far beyond our abilities at that point, and we miscalculated everything. And thanks to some kind of reason, we still managed to make the game. Uh, speaking of games, though, shall we talk about some other games than ours? Because, I mean, you guys have heard of that game before. <laughs> uh, you probably have heard of some of these as well, but uh, we want to talk about the distinction between head games and heart games. Yes, and um, so the, in, in head games, like we, we talked about, the, like approaching a uh, game and going into pr production with like where the way you're supposed to make money is a, like a, a a key part of the of the whole thing, and we think that games like uh, Counter Strike, Global Offensive, Dota 2, and and Hearthstone um, are uh, really good head games that also have like a ton of heart in them. And I remember way back when I first heard about um, Valve making Dota 2, and I was so like super surprised to, to hear that. Like I I um, I like really did, didn't understand why like why w are they going to pick pick up this and that was uh, around the time where I was getting into team Fortress 2 and I learned about like their hat economy and how that worked and it's and suddenly you realize like oh oh with the, like so many heroes and like the the potential of making money off of this it's of course hard to say if that if uh, that's been a part of the like 
the reason for why they chose to make Dota 2, but it's, it, it makes a lot of sense to me at least. And same with, uh, with uh, CSGO and Hearthstone games that really um, doesn't really do a lot of um, like innovative and, and, uh, and new stuff except for, for um, you know, the, the, the new graphics and, uh, uh, and all that. But it's still games that are, are like super good, really, really polished games made with, with enough heart that it stays tasteful. Like it's, it's fantastic games, tons of people play them and they're really, really, really profitable as well. Uh, we also kind of, kind of mentioned that uh, we, we wanted to include one game that kind of evolved interestingly because one of those games there is called basically Plants vs. Zombies and it's a very interesting uh, thing between the first game because there's basically been uh, two games out for so far. The first game was uh, you, we paid a price and you basically play this game and it is a game, it's a tower defense game and you can, you can play the game as a game. And, this, and the second one when it came out it was just in the middle of the uh, free-to-play uh, kind of era. And uh, the problem with the, the second game was that suddenly you had the same game, and they had kind of a lot of the content levels and the plants were now sort of locked behind a paywall. And you could definitely kind of get there without paying, but it would have to be a lot of grinding, and basically you would have to go into this loop of, I'll play these levels four times, and then I'll maybe can go to the next level that, that is like, I would have to pay, I don't know, like one or two pounds. Uh, so basically like a lot of small transition that would make the game just kind of stop and it wouldn't be fun anymore. You wouldn't be exploring anymore. You would just be do the, doing the, like the daily grind or whatever, which is a, a very good example of a head, like a pretty good head game that was designed to be quite profitable and quite well. And they went the wrong direction, we think, when they released the second one. Uh, yeah, and that's, it, yeah. That, that's what happens when, when you, like, or, yeah, or maybe uh, it wasn't that bad for that particular game, but the trend of head games where you take, like, the entire heart out of it, games that are made for the sole purpose of making money, because in video games, since it's um, a medium that has, like, so many users, of course there's a lot of money in it. A lot of money in it, and of course there are people coming into video games with the sole purpose of making money. And when you only use video games as a tool, as a vessel for like growing your wallet, then that's uh, where we think it becomes uh, like distasteful and uh, and not good. Hmm. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So we have a hard games, and actually I want to look at these games now. I sort of realized that. Um, they are mostly in the heart section. They have a lot of uh, interesting things about them. We just took four games that we think kind of manage something interesting uh, and a very strong like in a creative vision. But when I realized that, uh, look at them now, I kind of, we kind of realized that, uh, just kind of a spur of the moment thought, that none of these had uh, like an extreme good amount of uh, head in it. Uh, they were basically being developed and they got picked up and they blew up but that was not things, that's not something you can really foresee. And uh, I think we're gonna be a bit careful about saying that these things did a lot of good things in the head uh, department. Because I think probably they did a lot of good things for marketing in the games, but uh, no one could also foresee that these games would make it big before it kind of blew up, I guess. But yeah, um, it's, it's pretty much like the, the, the indie dream, right? Like everyone sees these fantastic titles and that are, so good on their own that like because in uh, when designing with heart and head you can like um the heart can make up for a little bit of what you lack in the in the head department right so when you are creating a game and you like you can be lucky and make a game that is like so good and it catches the attention of the right people and then suddenly enough people are playing it and and uh, talking about it and if it's just like an amazing game that stands out then that can be a really successful title. And, and the, the issue then becomes that a lot of, in this, this is like what we're going for basically, like many of us, um, we're making these games that we want to be like as good as these. And then with the like flood of video games coming out today, like, like when you're competing with like several thousands and you, you don't really stand out, it's really like, 
it's putting too many eggs in, in one basket, right? Yeah, um, there's, and what can happen uh, is something you can call kind of the indicators. And I'm gonna just go out here and uh, show uh, uh, two different developers that uh, has kind of been afflicted by the indicators in a way that's kind of interesting because they're in both different uh, situations. So this is uh, Daniel Linsen called Managor. He's a, like, I'm a big fan of him, and the reason why I, I uh, uh, talk about him as a person who's struck by the indicators, you can say, is that he's a, he is a young developer and he hasn't been doing a lot of uh, games that have been released. He has two games on Steam, though, and he has one game, uh, The Sun and Moon, also on Xbox, if I remember correctly. Uh, but he basically releases most of his games also through Itch.io, which is a very cool site, but realistically speaking, you, you don't make much money of it. We actually have tried to release, uh, we released a plan there uh, and had like pay whatever you want. It just went directly to the site developers because the plan is again with Quillbyte didn't want to make money of anyways. And I think it was downloaded more, maybe three, 4,000 times and we made two people paid for it. Um, so I can also think that this guy uh, would mostly make maybe $50 per game if it got a lot of coverage. And it's, it's, it's a shame because uh, his games are both very interesting to, as, as a game, but they have uh, like a strong vision, and, uh, but he doesn't have any way of kind of marketing these games. He doesn't do that or he doesn't do it well or something like that. So in the end, he is a struggling artist that does not have uh, the possibility to actually uh, go through with making his games. Uh, another guy is, uh, for those who are clicking, is uh, Robin uh, Baumgarten, who's made uh, Line Wobbler. And it's of course very experimental, uh, I guess. Like it's a one dimensional dungeon crawler, and you control it with a shoehorn, or like a doorstop, which is doing there. And uh, I don't know, this is like a promotional video, but I mean, I'm not really sure how good of a promotional video it is. And, <laughs> and it, it doesn't really, I mean, but this is a totally different uh, concept because uh, this guy, he's, uh, he's a developer who's been, been basically doing some uh, kind of games that have been doing very well on Android. So he's living off that still, and this game is like something he made uh, just because uh, it was an interesting game, and he wins a ton of awards. He can't sell it because, no, I mean, it's basically an installation-based game. Uh, but so it's basically like his work, he has this game which is cool, but no one gets to buy it, and doesn't make any money, but for him it's okay. For Daniel, of course, it's not because he needs the money. Uh, and that's the difference between two different indie game developers like that. Mm. And this kind of leads us into an interesting thing that we call in Crobat like the balancing act. And the balancing act is basically, um, and here we can take like a concrete example, because the, who of you saw the movie that Uremi made yesterday? Anyone? Okay, Most many people? You, yes. Great. Okay, so we got, we're gonna reference uh, what two people said, and the first person is Uremi. Uh, you had a good, uh, you actually were there, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually were there, yes. Yeah, so like uh, Yuremi said, um, but I'm gonna try to quote him as uh, correctly as possible. He said that uh, he doesn't care whether All Boy sells a million copies or not. He just really wants to be able to continue creating games comfortably. That's, that's, that's all he wants, right? And that's like so far out, like stupid like, Uremi, right? That's so like far out kind on of the... Out here, if you have the stage, just like the line, this is like Uremi right there. I mean, but he, I mean, notice though that he did say, like he, he also pointed out, of course, that <clears throat> he didn't manage how much he sold as long as, long as he could live comfortably. Comfortably, uh, yes. And it's kind of, I think that's a healthy attitude to have. It's like, you gotta make sure that you are uh, balanced in that you can do what you want and you can still survive from it. Uh, because we have the other uh, side, like this over here. But another guy was interviewed was Jürgen Taralsen. And Jürgen is uh, by far uh, one of the more uh, people in Norway who's very concerned about uh, making, uh, making games work and actually sell enough to live, live with it. And 
uh, he was basically saying that he's very concerned that a lot of people are not making um, enough money. And in Norway, it's very, very few developers who actually are making proper money so they can live a proper life. Although, and this is where the balancing act comes in, because their situation is totally different. Because Jürgen Tadelsen is a family guy, and he has a wife, and he has kids, and he has mortgage, and he has cars, and he has, I don't know, I, I know he takes photo photo photography, so he's pro probably has a camera, which costs <laughs> money. Like, so he, he, needs, uh, he needs a certain, to maintain his style of life, and of course to care, to care and nurture for those he uh, is responsible for, like kids, you know, or whatever. Uh, he, ne he needs to make like X amount of money, which is as, as a substantially bigger amount than what I guess Uriemi needs to make, which uh, do not have any kids or a dog or a car or I don't think he takes a lot of pictures, but if he does, Uriemi has a dog though. Yeah, but it's his parents' dog, yeah, okay. so it's, it's different. <laughs> yeah. um, so basically, what we're saying is that uh, the balancing act is when you are realistically smart enough to see that I want to do this. Uh, this is what I want to do. This is what is realistic for me to do. Because I, I can only develop this game for so long on this money. I don't have any money? Okay. I cannot develop this game unless I work in the evenings. But then you got, kind of start considering, like, maybe I have other things to do in the evenings. Like, if I have a family, maybe they would like me to be around and not actually work on a game. So you've got to really be careful, like, careful about that you place yourself near uh, where it's actually as a possibility that you can live in your situation in life. And it's a good Norwegian kind of phrase called Börs Cathedral. It comes from an interesting story where they wanted to tear down Oslo Domkirke uh, and build a, a, a stock market there instead. So uh, that became like, that's a very good symbol of, uh, it's basically like Börs, it's stock market and cathedral is, ca uh, cathedral is cathedral. And they were uh, gonna tear it down and build a stock market. And it became this interesting debate like, what is kind of, what, what is money next to art? Where is, the, where is the balance? Where do you keep kind of your, um, where is your, uh, what do you call them, values? And how do you balance that? It's a good expression kind of that is interchangeable with head and heart, with it, I think, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also just, um, yeah, what we're saying is that like, uh, it's it's a it's pretty uh, relevant uh, discussion. It's been raging on like ever since the like the games that we, we talk about the the head games that are completely heartless came out, where like you have the hippie indies that refuse to make money and and the other side that you know eats money, yeah. and it's like yeah you re you really just need to um, n like. Because on, on the on the heart and, and head scale in Krillbart, we tend to be like way over on the on the heart side, uh, and to the point where like it like we were lucky and without the luck and support we've gotten, we probably wouldn't have made it. So so we're learning that you there needs to be a balance and you need a little bit of um, of both. So revisiting the quote that we saw earlier in the presentation, um, we want this to be true and we try to make this as like we try to make this possible for us but in order to do that we realize as well that we have to make a profit of what we're doing if not we're just going to die and then like we're not going to do anything like if you're a dps in world of warcraft right a dead dps does no dps it's the same here right if uh, if if we can't make games then then how are we going to make our art and share our experiences exactly so basically what we want to do is we want to make art we want to be relevant today uh we are working in a medium that is so beautiful and unique i think and it's basically you know you can work in something that you put people in a world and it's totally constructed it's totally your creation and they're experiencing this and for themselves and that is a fascinating thing to be working with and it's a beautiful thing and it's very unique. It's, and it's basically no point to struggle and develop something within this, I think, that you're not proud of. And your, your vision can be kind of focused between heart and head. Uh, uh, everything is okay, I think, as, except the extremes, because then yeah. it's either like you lack self-preservation or you lack uh, like an artistic vision. Yeah. But it should matter to the people to playing it. It should affect them in a positive way. It should matter to you. It should affect you in a positive way. Yeah. Like we like we said earlier, like we video games is, is a super young medium. We can we can shape it and, and make it be whatever we, we want it to be. Every game that 
we make is a part of impacting like the, the future of of, uh, of video games. And on the heart and head scale, there's no like true right answer. We hope to be as much hard as we can, and we'll we'll strive to do that and uh, as much as possible. But it, yeah, it's re really up to like the individuals and the the teams to find out. But uh, like Martin said, with the extremes, like let's not be stupid and waste our opportunity. Like you can't make art unless you you uh, can sustain yourself. And like on the other side, if you abuse video games as a way of making money, then like do something else, right? It's yeah. like it, it's not uh, contributing. That's, That's yeah, what kind of what we wanted to say, I guess. And I we, we have a potato. Sorry for the long posts. <laughs> Uh, but we also have some time, we wanted to kind of also have some questions, so we have time for a couple of questions now. If I'm not sure how we do this here with the, if we have a microphone like last, like yesterday, or do we have a microphone? Cool. So, yes, is there any questions about this or any thoughts? Yes. Test. Hi. Hi. Do you have any advice for people that are in this situation as Managor or Dalin or Daniel Lilsen? Yeah, I mean, it's very important that people know about you. And I mean, his problem is that he has a large fan base. Like, he has a lot of people following him and waiting for what he's doing, but it's not enough people. And uh, if he doesn't like get out on Steam and if he doesn't get featured, he won't reach, or at least it will take a long time for him to reach a critical mass unless he has a game that blows up. Um, so a good tips for that would definitely be, you know, get some help. If you're one, he has a one-man operation, and it's very hard to run a one-man operation, one -man operation uh, especially if you want to focus on doing the game. You know, consider doing a, like uh, asking for if you can find a good publisher. There's just people out there, and having someone work on work on kind of selling a game for you can be a very good help. And it's also good to have someone to kind of like uh, to. I'm not sure if it's called fisticuffs, but it's quite a partner. Like, you know, you, you spar with people. It's good to have someone to kind of collaborate with a bit. And mm. uh, I think it's hard to be a single developer. Like, if you're, if you're sitting there, it's, it's rough. But I think, yeah, there, there are always ways, of obviously. Mm. But yeah, and also, like, you, you can, if you just look at, at his, uh, website is just like he he creates incredible things and it's super easy to look at it and see like what's unique about them so i mean i guess like i would just like to see him just like try harder maybe make like bigger things everything that i've seen from him at least is, is like very short projects mm. so maybe like uh, yes try to make a, a bit bigger but continue creating games make them a little bit bigger and and have a plan for how you're gonna sell them yeah but you know a cool way is like you know if you can't make big games either, because you know they're maybe beyond the scope of what you have, uh, like Terry Kavanaugh is a good example. He made Super Hexagon, which is like a, a super short game. It's over in a minute because, and it's over in 10 seconds if I play it because I'm not good. But basically, you, I, I, that's one of the games I've played the most like the last two years because this this game just works and it's it's a low development uh, thing, but it's skill based, so you want to play it again and again. So you get a lot of things from a short game. Mm. Yeah, is there anyone? So someone with your hands up there. Yeah, there you go. In the front, medium front, yes. In the medium front. The leather jacket. You, sir, medium front. The jacketed leather um, Do you What's have it? a banana for scale? No. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Any non-vegetable uh, or fruit-related questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, over there. One Lisa. Banana for scale. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, we have a banana for scale. Wait. May, may I have it? I can have it up here. Thank you. Like this. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, in Creelbyte, has your heart always been in the same place? Like, oh yeah, I, I, um, I hope so. I, th I think we yeah. change a lot, and uh, yeah, like yeah, if 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 um, if anything, I guess we've we've uh, like developed from the hard side more into the to the head side, even even though we're yeah, we really try to to um, like yeah, I, I guess it's um, 
every individual in Creelbyte R, I feel, have very simi similar values. So it's very easy for us to like remain in the uh, with with the same vision and have the heart in the same place. Um, but yeah, I guess we we like we've we've learned that like we got lucky and we are like it's gone well for us and now we're surviving and we just want to like continue that. So yeah, if anything, we've grown in the like more like pushed a little bit towards the head. Yeah. Side I think like what we do now, which just feels very good, is that we, we, ch we chose the next project we're working on based on like, of course, we want to make this game super cool. And then we started getting, it felt like we were kind of getting smart at like, how can we actually sell this game? Because it's going to be a harder game to sell than Among the Sleep because, because like when you hear the tagline, it won't be as cool as, you know, your two-year-old kid horror game, bruh. And, and <laughs> uh, I said it too much, so it doesn't have that same coolness factor anymore. But basically like, our, our next game uh, will be a very different game, and I'm extremely proud of the way we're thinking already now to kind of market and sell this game. But the game came first, and then we started kind of thinking of the, the head part and the money, like how to kind of live from it, I guess. And it's important, that's important. I, I like that distinction that we actually did, that, did it that way, and I think if we, if we can, we will still want to do that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I guess, do we have time for one more question, or? Is there anyone in charge? I don't know really how to, to ask. Yeah, cool. Okay, one, one last question. This is, this, is, this is it, guys. <laughs> Make it or break it. Okay? Yeah. All right. I guess we'll end on a, like, a quote from um, Martin's father. Uh, don't fuck this up. <laughs> and uh, yes, thank you. He always... Uh,